Okay, so now that we have uh, looked at what we already know about the person that we're re we are researching, whether it's a lot or a little, um, we need to look at what our goals are, okay? And so our goals are that your no facts, you hit 10. That is not very much. I will explain what a note fact is in a second, but I assure you that you can make 10, okay? You're gonna be looking for two internet sites, okay? You can do more. There's room in your packet to do more than two if you want more information. And more information is always better. But we have deadlines, and we don't wanna go past those deadlines, okay? And so if you have two, we're going to move on, okay? And then they're going to be internet. Mr. Cummings and I have a list of websites for your person, that whomever you are researching, that are approved by us, that have good information on them that you can use. And so uh, we literally have a Google document. You just click on the link and we'll take you to the website, okay? And so you're going to use those links to uh, two of them at a minimum, right? to take at least 10 pieces of information. Now, glossary words I will talk a little bit more. You want two of them. These are, you can think of them as vocabulary words, okay? So these are words that for your particular person that you're researching in your time period in history would be important, right? They would be really relevant. There are some things that, uh, that are happen at certain periods in time and those vocabulary words are kind of embedded in the history. And so you're looking for two um, and you're gonna list the word and the definition, okay? Now, now these are our goals. What is it that we actually have to come up with in terms of information? Well, those are our, our questions, okay? So we are gonna be looking to answer very specific questions. Um, and those questions are, what accomplishments did the, did the defendant achieve that benefited, right, his civilization? So in this case, right, like these are kinds of like, well, the ends do justify the means. Like what the defendant was doing was justified, right? There was a reason why he went to war and the people who died are a result of war, not murder. And the arson was a result of war not murder and then the end it was all his own territory and you're looking for those kinds of defenses um to help uh explain why the defendant did what he did right and then the people who were helped or benefited could be witnesses right they were going to be able to testify for the defendants we want to know who they are right um that means being specific that means what cities what people, what groups of people, places, right? Very specific that benefited in order for you to create believable witnesses so that you could win the trial. Because in the end, that's your goal. You want to win the trial, okay? Um, and then what on the other side, did the defendant do that harmed people? Well, some of those achievements, they resulted in people getting hurt right? And so who were those people? What were those actions, right? Because again, we want to be specific. Where did wars happen? Where did people just surrender and become part of Alexander the Great's empire? And where were cities destroyed? That makes a difference in terms of just deciding who your witnesses are going to be, right? And where they are from and all those details matter. Um, and then who were the defendant's allies and friends, right? Again, they're gonna be testifying for the defense probably. So you want specific people whenever possible, right? And so you want names and then who were their enemies, right? And again, if possible, you want names, right? It isn't always gonna be possible to have names, but certainly family, key military allies, they're going to be in the history. And so you can have those names, you can have those cities, you can have the leaders of those cities. Those are all important people. All right, so with this in mind, right, what actually is involved then in taking notes? I know you all think you know how to take notes. I know that. But, I mean, the reality is that you don't know how to take notes. 
So when you take notes for research, especially when you're using more than one source and you're going to be using, you know, several websites, um, you want to make sure that you identify where each piece of information, each fact came from. That's why they call them note facts, right? We're writing down facts. And so you want to make sure that you have identified the source. So at the top of your note facts sheet, there is a place for you to list the source and number it. For, um, for you there, pre-number, okay? So it's going to be source one, source two, source three, maybe source four. So um, you want to write down the website that you went to. I have a lot of information here. I have the, the title of the page, the website that was a PBS website, who published it, the date, um, the fact that it was a website, and the date last published. This is all information we're going to need in order to cite the source. However, because we have a lot of electronic ways to cite sources today, if you just write down PBS, right, if you just write down this, the name of the website that you went to, that really is enough, and I will count that, right? But you have to write something here that clearly identifies the website that you went to to write these notes, okay? And you'll notice that as they go down this sheet, all of the little, uh, magnifying glasses are numbered the same. They're not numbered one, two, three, four. They're all numbered two because this is source two, my second website that I went to. And so all of this information came from this website. That's what we need to know. Down the road, when we're putting it all together and somebody says, well, where did you get that information? This two tells me where I got it. I got it from this source. Because you notice these little scissors? We're eventually going to be cutting along all of these lines. Okay? And so once we cut along these lines, we would not know where this information, that he was a soldier, that he was a lawyer and a writer, that he researched the basis of scientific authority, that he died during the eruption of Mount Vesuv Vesuvius. Where did I know this? Where did I get this information? Well, it all came from this particular website, right? Twos are on every single one of these little strips, right? And so I can track it back to where I found it. That is really important to avoid somebody saying, well, you're lying or it wasn't accurate or that it was um, plagiarized, okay? The second thing I want to point out is because we're going to be cutting out along these lines, you do not want to write on the line. You want to write between the lines. Notice how I've written between them, right? Because if you write on the line and then you go to cut them out, now you have a problem, okay? So I am sorry if that's confusing to some people who really feel like they need to write on the dotted lines, but you are not writing on the dotted lines. You are writing between them because we are going to cut these into strips, okay? So, um, and you're going to write down the answers to those, qu those questions, right? You know, what did he do that benefited people? He was a soldier. He was a lawyer and a writer. He was a researcher. Um, this one, I don't know. I don't know that this would actually be relevant for a trial, right? He was born into a wealthy family. That's relevant, right? Um, his first career was in the Army, so he had some Army buddies, right, versus the, the Navy. He had the rank of cavalry officer, and he was a commander, um, and so, like, all of these things are relevant in terms of developing characters and stories for his life. We know that once he retired, he returned to Rome. So if I had, if I was going to create a, a situation where I needed a slave in his household, I might have that person, like, say I lived in Rome, right? Because we know he returned to Rome. So cities, places, things like that, super important. Um, in order to do the trial, okay? Um, and so I'm just trying to help you make sure you write down the things that are going to help you create your witnesses and the witnesses' stories versus a lot of things that turn out to not be relevant at all, all right? Okay, so now that you know what a note fact is, let's go back and look at our requirements, right? So our note fact is one strip. Our requirements were 10 note facts and two sources. So, if you want 10 no facts from two sources, that means you need five strips. One, two, three, four, five. Can you do more than three sources? 
Yes, there's room in your packet for more than three sources. So that would mean even less. Maybe you have three or four little strips. That's not a lot of information, right? I mean, really probably in order to do a, a good job developing a witness, you, you might want to go over the minimum. But the minimum is two websites and 10 note facts. One, two, three, four, five. It could be, it could be eight at one and two at another. There's no like specific number. It could be any way you match that up. Any way you make the math work, works. Okay. And so let's look at the rubric. Okay. So you'll see 10 note facts, five right? They do need to be in your own words. They should be short to the point. You should not be quoting long sentences from the uh, internet, right? You want to make it short and to the point in your own words. If you do at least seven, which is three from one, four from another, or four from one and three from another, or five and two, if you do at least seven, you get a four. If you do at least one, <laughs> at least one note fact, you'll get a three, okay? So the only way to get a zero is to do nothing. If you do at least two websites, you get a five. If you do at least one, you get a four, okay? So even if you do, let's say, five note facts and get a three, but from that one website, that's one, okay? So that's four, okay? So if you don't number them, which they're pre-numbered in your packets, um, if you don't number them to match the no facts, then it's a three. <laughs> and then uh, again, the only way to get a zero is to do no notes, okay? So I really do think that this is a fairly easy grade, uh, a fairly easy quiz grade for most students and well worth your time to put in a little effort. If you have questions, if you need help, that's why we're doing these videos so that we can help you in class. Raise your hand. We're happy to ask the questions. Okay, answer your questions.